What's going on, everybody? My name is Wooly, and you just kind of see I'm kind of decked out in some hockey gear right now. And that's because I'm going to talk a little bit about hockey. we got the hockey season coming up in October, and this is the first year that I'm actually going to be a season ticket holder for the Peoria Rivermen. And I'm actually very excited for the hockey season this year. And to kind of show, like, how bad my brain has been going thinking about hockey, and particularly the SPHL or the Southern Professional Hockey League, I came up with a fantasy expansion plan of sorts. Not necessarily like a year-to-year -year thing, but just kind of like where could they go and be successful. Now, for those of you who don't know what the SPHL is, it is a professional hockey league, kind of like single-A level, um, if we were to compare it to baseball, that runs mostly in the southeast United States. They have a few teams up in the north, a um, couple of them in Illinois, one in Indiana, and... They operate on a 56-game schedule, and they're the team that the PR Riverman play in, which, you know, makes me a little bit more invested in the league and hoping that the league succeeds and that's healthy. So I've been thinking, the commissioner of the league, Jeff Combs, um, whenever they were doing the challenge round for the first round of the playoffs this past season, talked about how he wants to get the league to 14 to 16 teams. He thinks that's a good sweet spot for the league, and it's a good size for the league and i kind of like that idea so why not have a fancy expansion of 16 teams get six more teams in and, and you know keep the rest of the league the same you know just think forward just pretend that everything succeeds that they're fine that they're perfectly you know capable of surviving for the next you know couple years what would an expanded sphl look like with 16 teams all right, so the first thing that I have pulled up here for you guys is the official SPHL team map. This was tweeted out by the Fayetteville Marksmen, and you know this has been pretty much spread around the entire league. If you go to any of the team's uh, websites, they probably have this map on their website. And as you can see, it has uh, it has the logos of all the teams that are currently in the league. It's got the Quad City Storm, which is the newest team that just came in up in Moline, Illinois. Uh, Peoria Riverman, Peoria, Illinois, Evansville Thunderbolts in Evansville, Indiana, the Roanoke Rail Yard Dogs in Roanoke, Virginia, the Knoxville Ice Bears in Knoxville, Tennessee, the Fayetteville Marksmen in Fayetteville, North Carolina, the Macon Mayhem in Macon, Georgia, the Huntsville uh, Havoc in Huntsville, Alabama, the Birmingham Bulls in Birmingham, Alabama, and the Pensacola Ice Flyers in Florida. That's currently the 10 teams that make up this league. And as you can kind of see from this map, there are some gaps. There are some places that we could easily expand to that really could help out this league and kind of bring in some connective tissue into this league and kind of give it a little bit of a fuller feel. So that's what I am attempting to do. Now, there are a couple ground rules I have for this. One, try to get some of these other states involved. As you can see, there's states like Kentucky, South Carolina, Mississippi – that have no teams in them right now. So I'm going to try to get some of those states involved. One place I did fail in, though, I was trying to get more teams into the northern states, like Ohio and West Virginia and maybe another one in Indiana. Um, because if you ever looked at a map of where Peoria and Moline, Illinois are, they are the two fathers north teams in the league, and they are kind of just out there on their own, uh, to be perfectly honest. And I tried to think of a good way to expand the league into those into those states, but it kind of proved rather difficult because one of the things I did not want to do was put a team into a market that already had some pro team in it, some pro hockey team in it. So any teams that are currently in the National Hockey League, the American Hockey League, the ECHL, or the Federal Hockey League were no-goes. And whenever you look at some of the some of the major areas that you would look at for hockey in those states you know you think of towns in indiana for example like like fort wayne indiana or indianapolis those two cities currently have teams in the echl that are doing fairly well in fact indianapolis out of all the teams that are in indiana or ohio in terms of attendance in the echl had the worst but they were still perfectly fine like they had like i think it was like 38 3900 average per game so they're perfectly fine in, in fact i think it's toledo ohio with the toledo walleye and the fort wayne comets who actually had the two highest attendance averages in the entire echl so 
they're not going anywhere unless the their affiliates, their NHL affiliates decide, you know what, we're going to move you over here, we're going to move you over there. Which, honestly, Indianapolis is an affiliate of the Chicago Blackhawks. I think they're perfectly fine where they're at. Um, I don't see any of these other teams moving. They're very profitable. They are they they fit where they need to fit. That being said, I just don't see those teams moving around. And obviously, the state of Ohio, good God. They got the Columbus Blue Jackets in the NHL. Uh, Cincinnati has a team in the uh, in the ECHL. Uh, Cleveland has a team in the AHL. And like I said, Toledo has a team in the ECHL as well. Um, there was a small town called Mentor, Ohio, that just got an expansion team to the FHL. So th- those towns are out. And quite honestly, when you look at the uh, when you look at these two states, I just if if we're going to avoid current markets that are filled, I I couldn't do anything with those two states. It was really difficult. Like the only place I could think of um, was South Bend, Indiana, but then you're competing with the University of Notre Dame, and that's a high level college hockey town. I don't know how they would fit what. If they would fit in well um, with the SPHL, just because South Bend, Indiana is in no- like far up north in the state of the of Indiana, so yeah, sorry Indiana, sorry Ohio, you don't get any SPHL teams on this list. And as for West Virginia, I really couldn't think of anything else. So sorry guys. That being said, um, I kind of did a little bit more research than I thought I would for this because I looked at the t- at those cities that I would want to see expansion in. I looked at the population, their metro area. I also looked at where they could possibly play at over the next few years, you know, for hockey. Like, what arenas are available? Do they have ice? What's the capacity of those arenas, et cetera, et cetera. And I think I got a list of six teams that could really work in this league and keep it in a pretty tight bunch. Because, remember, this is low minor league hockey that we're talking about. So, is what it is. Also, if you guys want to see some other fantasy expansions, I don't know if there's any on YouTube, but I did tweet out at the guys over at Bus League Hockey. There are a couple riders who follow the minor league and junior league hockey in the United States. And they I've actually asked them, hey, do you guys want to go and do a fantasy expansion to 16 teams of the SPHL? They said, sure. And this is kind of my uh this is my entry into it. All right, so I went ahead and put it on Google Maps, pinpoint where these towns are currently located with these teams. As you can see, you got the Quad City Storm and Peoria Riven way up here. You got Evansville over here, and then you got Pensacola that's way down here. And you got Roanoke and Fayetteville are kind of out by their own as well a little bit. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bring some connective tissue. I'm trying to bring up areas that can have some good potential rivalries with them. And I'm just trying to overall con- better connect the leagues. Maybe try to get the three northern teams, Evansville, Peoria, Quad City. Um, try to give them more opponents closer and maybe give them a better connection within the rest of the league. So let's take a look as we got in blue the current 10 teams. And as you can see, whenever we add the six expansion teams that are in red, those, just from a visual standpoint going to connect the team a lot better the league a lot better going to bring some new rivalries because of the close proximity to each other but let's go through each town and let's talk about each individual market and let's talk about why i think they'd be a good fit okay so let's start off with my probably my weakest team my weakest market to deal with and that is south haven mississippi um which is currently right here you see that marker looks like it's on memphis But South Haven, Mississippi is just a little bit south of Memphis. It's a suburb of Memphis, just across the state border. And the Mississippi River Kings had just ceased operations uh, for this next season. They were actually a playoff team last year. Unfortunately, the owners decided that they were pretty much done with the team. I don't know, like, what the financial situation was. But seeing how they were one of the lower teams in terms of attendance, in terms of advertising... And just for the mere fact that South Haven also has a population of about 54,000, doesn't help them. Sure, they have the Memphis area to pull from, but, you know, it gets kind of hard to pull from those bigger cities to come to a suburb to watch hockey, especially in the South sometimes. But the league is currently looking for owners, and why I say this is the weakest is that whenever the league is looking for a new ownership group, 
that's usually a bad sign. But I'm going to assume that they do. I'm going to assume they bring back the Mississippi River Kings because there is a very good fan base that is still there that really loves that team. So I am hoping that they could bring the Mississippi River Kings back. There was a part of me that wanted to bring them back up to Memphis just because you're now in the main Memphis area. But there wasn't really an ice rink in Memphis to, that would actually fit the SPHL mold because the SPHL... They usually look for arenas that are about 4,000 to maybe at worst 10,000 people um, in size, at least to make logical sense. Really, the only place in the area was the Lander Center in South Haven, Mississippi. It could see 8,400 people. Um, it was the former home of the River Kings last season before they uh, ceased operations. So, yeah, I think this is probably my weakest pick just because of how recent uh, they have suspended their operations and suspended their membership in the league. But hopefully they find a new ownership group and hopefully they can bounce back and, you know, rejoin the league maybe within the next year or two. Now, speaking of bringing back a market into the SPHL, let's talk about Augusta, Georgia. Now, Georgia has a couple markets that used to be in the SPHL. And originally, whenever I made a second Georgia team, it was going to be Columbus. Uh, Columbus, Georgia is right there on the border between Georgia and Alabama. Um, and really, the only reason I decided not to go with Columbus on this one is the future pick that I had for South Carolina, given a little bit more of a connective tissue between Macon and that location. So, but Augusta has a very good um, history of hockey. Um, the most recent being that they were the Augusta Riverhawk. In fact, the Augusta Riverhawks, really the reason they left that market is because the James Brown Arena, which was their home arena and which is the arena that I have them going into again, uh, the ice machine that helps make the sheet of ice for the rink um, was malfunctioning. It was not a good situation for the team. And really, this team didn't, didn't like go away because they were you know, in financial issues, had any financial issues or anything, or had any problems. In fact, the original Augusta Riverhawks actually relocated to Macon and became the Macon Mayhem. So that team has actually been doing fairly decent. Um, over the past several years. So I think as of now, as long as James Brown Arena has got their um, issues figured out in terms of the ice machine working and in terms of being able to market the hockey team, I think if you brought a, a hockey team back to Augusta, I think we have a really good um, really good chance of that place succeeding. And also a rival rivalry between Macon and Augusta, Macon being the old Augusta team and the new Augusta team coming in. I think that'd be a great rivalry. All right, let's now go over to South Carolina since I've already kind of mentioned them. And this one was tough. I originally was going to go with Columbia, South Carolina. But after thinking about it and after kind of doing some research and kind of pulling from uh, a past article from uh, the Bus League Hockey guys, I actually started looking at Florence, uh, South Carolina. Now, Florence, South Carolina is a town that has a population of 38,000. Um, but the metro area has a little over 200,000 people in it, which is not a bad size for an SPHL market. It's the smallest market uh, on this expansion, but um, they did have an ECHL team in the past called the PD Pride, which is still one of the weirdest names I've heard for a hockey team. I guess it's like the PD region of South Carolina or something, but they did have the PD Pride there, and they lasted for a while, and... I don't know what happened in terms of like the where their bad ticket sales or what, but it wasn't good enough for the ECHL. They had to um, give back the membership to the ECHL. Um, from what I was able to look up, the last couple of years of existence for PD Pride was like they had an average of like 25, 2600 um, fans per night. And the last season was the 2004, 2005 season. So, I don't know how well that market is going to hold up to hockey, but I think if they do the advertiser right, I think if they bring uh, hockey back into Florence and back to the Florence Civic Center, which holds a little over 7,500 people in it for hockey, I think they could bring back um, 
hockey influence. And I think they do decently well in the SPHL. They'd be right about mid-tier in terms of attendance if they were in the league today. So let's go a little bit farther south and let's go to Florida. Now, Pensacola is very lonely down there. They're the southernmost team in the league right now. And I think they need a friend. So let's go over to Tallahassee, Florida. Tallahassee, the state capital, home of Florida State. And they have a population of just over 190,000 with a metro area of about 380,000 people. Um, they There is some hockey history in there. They had the Tallahassee Tiger Sharks. Um, that team has been relocated a few times. They are now over in uh, Salt Lake City, Utah as the Utah Grizzlies. Um, it currently in the ECHL. Um, but while they were in Tallahassee, they started off in the CHL and then moved up to the ECHL. And then they started bouncing around a little bit. Um, but I think as far as, you know, hockey er areas that used to have hockey, that I think if the success in that area would be anywhere comfortable today, um, I think they could probably pull it off in the SPHL. For me personally, for their arena, I would look at the Donald L. Tucker uh, Civic Center holds about 9,500 people in it, which is a little bit on the big side. Um, so they might have to uh, canvas off or tarp over seats in the upper, um, in the upper uh, bowl areas or whatever they call them. Some of the, you know, just just pull away from the sides of like the of the nosebleed sections. You know, bring it down a little bit so that you know you can. Not have like everyone split off towards the sides and the ends. But I think Tall has to be a great market. Um, it pulls in Macon down in Florida a little bit better. It's about a three and a half hour drive between Pensacola and Tallahassee. So maybe on a bus it's probably like four, four and a half hours realistically. But that brings a team closer to Pensacola and that helps them out a lot, which you know, hopefully Pensacola doesn't go down because of some of the arena issues that they've been having over the past couple of years. So, fingers crossed, uh, they're able to go on. But I think this would be a good fit. You'll have two teams in Florida now, and I think that makes a good fit. Kentucky, you guys are going to um, just be in hockey heaven with this list. And um, I know this is probably a bit more of a homer thing for me. But I think these guys fit in well, well, really well. So let's talk about the two Kentucky teams. Let's start off with Lexington, Kentucky. And Lexington, Lexington Kentucky has a fairly decent history with hockey. Um, they used to have teams in the AHL and the ECHL. Um, they're... Population currently right now is about 320,000 people with a metro area of just over 600,000. And, you know, they're home to the University of Kentucky. And I would have them playing in Rupp Arena. Now, for those of you who are fans of University of Kentucky Wildcats basketball, that's your home arena. So I think that brings in a couple of issues in terms of uh, how do you work around the uh, schedule of college basketball along with this hockey league. But I think they could do it. A lot of arenas do it all the time. And I think with the capacity, because right now the Rupp Arena for hockey has about a capacity of 10,000 people. Once again, you're going to have to uh, cover up some seats in the upper um, areas and on the ends to bring it more, um, more in line with what the SPHL size really brings in. But whenever they were in the AHL, the ECHL, they had a tenants that was well within uh, reason for the SPHL. And I th ever since that time, like back, I think it was like the early 2000s, they have just had a population explosion over there in Lexington. So I think, you know, with that population explosion, there's more people to advertise to. There's more people that might like hockey. I think you get a well su good, a well supported team there. And that brings in, you know, a new team for Roanoke to come over and play, Knoxville to come over to play. Evansville now has a team that's within about three and a half hours. Peoria and Quad City, again, another team to play. That's, you know, a reasonable drive. And, you know, you're bringing hockey in Kentucky, so there's that. The final team that I have is Louisville. And Louisville's kind of an interesting one here. 
Um, originally, whenever I looked at them, I was not sure what I was going to do for an arena for them. Because they have the KFC Yum Center, which holds 21,000 people in it. And is way too big for the SPHL. Heck, it would be in the upper um, capacities for the NHL. And, in fact, while I was looking and researching, the city council was, tr was trying to come up with a plan to bring the NHL to Louisville, Kentucky. Which, it could work in Louisville, Kentucky. Don't get me wrong. But... I mean, just the mere fact that we know Seattle is going to be number 32 and that the next place that they would be looking at would be Houston. I don't know if Louisville could work. I mean, unless they're going to expand to like 36 teams and then even then that's a maybe. So right now I have them in the SPHL. I have them going to the Broadbent Arena. Uh, Broadbent Arena is part of a bigger complex, which is, you know, which is, you know, commonplace for most of the teams in the SPHL, um, like the Carver Arena for Peoria Riverman is in the Peoria Civic Center. The Broadbent Arena has been has had hockey there in the past. Um, they had a couple of former teams in the ECHL. Um, they have a capacity of 6,600 uh, 6, people in it. Louisville, another place with big explosion in terms of population, currently has about 621,000 people in it with a metro area of 1.3 million. I think that this, I think Louisville would be a great fit, especially if you brought in Lexington along with it, because Louisville now has two teams that are within an hour and a half of each of them, which would be Lexington and Evansville. And I think that makes a pretty good fit for them. And it also helps Evansville a lot because. You know, kind of like how Quad City and Peoria currently right now uh, have deals with season ticket holders to get discounts on tickets if they come to away games. Um, I think you could do the same thing with Evansville, Louisville, and Kentucky. And I think you can really help out in, with all three of those teams, especially Evansville right now, because Evansville last season had the worst attendance per game in the entire league last year. So I think Evansville needs a little bit of a pick-me-up. And teams in Louisville and Lexington, I think, could do that. So, yeah, that's kind of what my thought was going into making those, getting those two cities in there is to try to help Evansville out and bring in a little bit more for Peoria and Quad City. So, yeah, those are my six expansion locations for this league. Now, after this expansion, I would say that they need to do divisions. They need to have a North Division and a South Division. I tried working this out for... And east and west, but really the splits, uh, I think, would split up rivalries a little too much. So I decided to go with north and south. And here are the locations for the north division in purple and the south division in gold. In the north division, you obviously have the Quad City Storm. You have the Peoria Riverman, the Evansville Thunderbolts, Louisville, Lexington, Roanoke, Knoxville, Mississippi, South Haven. In the South, you have Huntsville, Birmingham, Pensacola, Tallahassee, Macon, Augusta, Florence, and Fayetteville. There could be a couple of different ways you could have done this. I thought about bringing Fayetteville into the Northern Division, but that brings in the largest travel distance in the entire league between Quad City and Fayetteville. So that didn't make a lot of sense to me to go that route. Um, and really, no matter what happened, the Northern Division was going to be a bit more spread out than the Southern Division. Really, unless you get more teams in the North, that it was going to happen that way. But I think I actually did a pretty good job. I think that this could work and that we could actually see some new rivalries pop up. And I think this would be a great way for the league to grow and expand. And, you know, maybe if there's 20 teams, if they go to the 20 teams, maybe we can find spots in Indiana and Ohio and maybe even West Virginia and maybe even Southwest Pit, uh, Pennsylvania to grow. But that being said, this was only to get to 16. So those are my picks. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys start some debate in the comment section. Make sure to check out Bus League Hockey. I'll put their links in the description. They're going to be doing their own expansion of the SPHL in a couple of articles. So hopefully they come through. Hopefully they find some good places to go. And who knows, maybe this video is up the same day. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed. My name's Lil Wooly, and I'm out.
Peace.